Ciao friends! Beth with Thimblehooks. Thanks for stopping by for today's stitch tutorial. I have created a way to do my favorite, one of my favorites, not my favorite because my favorite stitch is Suzette, but this is Catherine's Wheel in the round. As I made a very cool cowl last year but it had a seam. So I've been having this in the back of my brain for quite some time and now I have the stitch counts down for you so let's get started. This one is probably big enough for like a can of pop or a can of beer or soda, I guess. I call it pop. From Minnesota, I call it pop. And this one that I have right here is a very nice project that you will see later. This one is much bigger, but it's in the round. Not one seam. No seams. See, there's no seams. So I'm going to put this one away and let's get started. I hope you're enjoying my video and my channel. If so, please click that button to subscribe. Thanks! I'm going to be using some things that really show off the difference in colors. I've got a Super Saver, which is this one, Turquoise. Turquoise. And this is, I love this yarn, Instant Classic. They go together, but they definitely will stand out. So you'll be able to see the different rows, just like this one. You'll want um, at least a six millimeter hook. Because you want it to be a little bit more give. You don't want the stitches to be super tight in this one, otherwise your wheels get a little wonky and two stitch markers and the way that we start this one since we're working in the round you want to use one hook that's flat that isn't big like this with a big handle or a grip or any kind of ergonomic thing to it just get one of these since I'm going to show you my little trick for how I make sure that I don't have a twist in my chain when I'm working in the round right, so it's slip knot and we're going to use my flat one because I'm going to use my prim later, but I want my one that has a nice skinny handle. And we're gonna go one and two. Let's mark this first stitch just so it doesn't get too tight and get dismissed or get get missed somewhere along the way. Three, four, and five. And when we get to five, we're gonna come down here on this all the way down, but not off of our hook, and put this bottom end through that mark stitch. Now we are not going to get any kind of a twist in our chain. So we have five chains on our hook. I want 50. So there's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When you get to about ten, you'll be able to just hold this one very nicely and get out to 50. 49 and 50. I'm going to mark this stitch to this chain because I don't want to have to count while I'm in the ring. So now we have both ends are on our hook right now. We're going to take the one that's on our hook and just pull through the other end and a chain one. Now we have an untwisted chain. Hooray! Our first stitch is going to go into this marked stitch right here and we want a single crochet all the way around you need to have 50 stitches so right in here and then I'm going to move my stitch marker to my new single crochet right here and single crochet all the way around back to this marker and this one should be number 50 the orange one here should be number 50 and then we'll have a single crochet all the way around and I'll meet you at the other side. Please remember that it really helps my channel when you watch the video all the way to the end. Number 49 and here I am coming up to my last stitch marker number 50. So now I have a ring of single crochets that are not twisted. Now I can switch over to the hook that I want to use. This was just to get started so we can do the no twist in my chain part. Now I'm going to go and use the hook that I want to use which is my prim because I love my prims. And we are working on right here. Now we have our base 50 single crochets. Like I said this is all a multiple of 10. I'm going to take my orange stitch marker and I'm going to mark this very last stitch that I just completed. This single crochet number 50 is getting marked. Just so you don't lose or gain any stitches around the circle. Don't be afraid of your stitch markers. They are your friend. So now all we need to do is into our first marked stitch, the one that I have marked in blue, is a slip stitch and a chain one so that we're ready for the next round. 
So now we're get ready to begin our sequence for our Catherine's Wheel in the round. So what we start out with is single crochet times three. And I'm going to move my stitch marker to my first stitch again just so I don't have to count all these. So there's one, two, and three. Skip three stitches, one, two, three, and in this fourth stitch we want seven double crochets. Six and here is number seven and those are all in the same stitch. So now we have a little fan. Then skip three more stitches, one, two, three, and in that fourth stitch over we're going to put in a single crochet and a single crochet in the next and a single crochet in the next. So groups of three single crochets, skip three, seven double crochets in the same stitch, skip three, three single crochets. So we're going to do that again. Skip three, one, two, three. This fourth one gets seven double crochets, seven. Skip three, three single crochets in a row and do that sequence all the way around and I'll meet you back at the stitch marker. And here's my last set of stitches. I did those. Did my three single crochets. I'm going to skip three, one, two, three, seven double crochets. number seven. And now I have three stitches left. One, two, three. We skip all of them and jump over to our first mark stitch and do a slip stitch. Just a slip stitch and a chain one so we're ready for the next row or the next round. So we can take out this orange one. So we want to count back five from where this one was. One, two, three, four, five. So the fifth stitch from the end. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll mark that because we're going to need that very specific stitch in just a little bit. We did our slip stitch and our chain one in our mark stitch. That same mark stitch is going to get a single crochet. And now we are going to single crochet all the way around. Make a nice edge. And there will be 50. Use my last few stitches all the way up to and including the orange one. Want to move that stitch marker after you complete the stitch in that mark stitch. Move your stitch marker. Just get in the habit of doing that and you won't lose your place. It's really important and you'll find out why in just a second. And there's just the last one, two, three, four and five. And this was the chain, so of course that doesn't count from last time. So there's our last five stitches. Again, one, two, three, four, five. This fifth one in is marked. And we want to jump over to our original first marked stitch, slip stitch, and fasten off. Now we're going to change colors for our next round of the Catherine's Wheel. So what we did was this the dark blue part right here or here it might be easier to see the pink right here and we did that with the turquoise. So now we have our base. So now we're going to move on to this one or to this one and I'm going to use my instant classic now which is a really fun jumble of colors. This is I love you. I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby. I really do love this yarn. It is so soft. So our trick is we don't have any half wheels on a flat project for a Catherine's wheel. You're going to have at the beginning and the end, you're going to have like a four double crochets, half of a wheel. We don't have to do that. There's no half wheels. We don't have to piece any of them together by starting at this fifth stitch when you change colors. This is the biggest trick in the whole way of doing this. If you already know how to make a Catherine's wheel, then you don't have to learn anything else except this. So we're going to fasten on, single crochet all the way around, but this is our first stitch is way over here. One, two, three, four, 
and those were those last five, remember? And now we go to our first mark stitch. That's why I have two markers so I don't add or drop a stitch anywhere along the way. And I don't really want to sit and count to 50. If I think I missed a stitch, then I have to count, and I don't want to. So unless you really like to count your stitches regularly, use those markers. It's so much easier. But I'm just going to single crochet all the way around, and then we will get into making our next wheel. And my last couple of stitches. And now we're back to a new starting point. This one does not a starting point anymore. This is our new starting point, and this is our new stitch, our new first stitch. So I did my 50 single crochets all the way around. Now we'll start the wheel. Here's our first stitch right here. Slip stitch, and chain one, so we're ready for the next round. Now the reason we jumped way over here is so that we can always start with the three single crochets. So I'm going to mark my stitch. We don't have to start in the middle of a wheel. One, two, and three. Always get to start every new row with the three single crochets instead of a half a wheel or a whole wheel or any of that. So now for the next row we have to do the bottom part of our wheel because here we did a half a wheel because we just did the top, but now we have to do the bottom. And the bottom is all of these. All of them have a bottom and a top. So the bottom is we're going to double crochet seven together. So in these ne next seven stitches, we're going to go in, pull through, yarn through two, but leave these loops on your hook. I'm going to do that seven times. Two. Six and seven. Now we have all these loops on our hook. Is it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight loops on your hook. Now we want to yarn over and pull through everybody. Pull through all of them and chain one to close. Now I am one who does not like the big open spots. I don't like the, I just don't like the big gaps. There's a few gaps in one part, but on the side I really thought they were too big, so I've changed it. Instead of right now there will be two more chains, we are going to slip stitch into this little part right here, and then slip stitch into our last stitch where we put our very last double crochet of our seven together, and that equals our two chains. Instead of having them big, big open spot, now they are connected. Then we go right into our three single crochets. And I do a chain three after, only after, those not after and before, and do seven double crochets together again. Chain one to close, and a slip stitch here and a slip stitch in our last, our last stitch that had double crochet number seven. There you go. There's the bottom of our wheel. So then right into our three single crochets, chain three, and then double crochet seven together. And continue that sequence all the way around. There was my last one. Slip stitch, slip stitch, and slip stitch into our marked, and chain one for the next round. See how easy this is. This is easier to do this in the round by far, I think, than it is to do a Catherine's wheel on a flat piece. Just moving your stitches over a little bit so you can always start with three single crochets instead of trying to figure out how to make a half a wheel and then reattach the wheel later. You don't want to reinvent your wheel. And so the second round, 
is going to be just like the top of this one was because we have to do we have to make the top of our wheel. So in our marked stitch, single crochet and move our marked stitch or move our marker. One, two, and three. And now in the top, right here where you did the chain one to close of all of these sevens, now we want to put seven double crochets into that chain. All seven of them will be in that same spot. seven. There you go. Now you jump over all of this because you want to go always, always want to be single crochet your three on top of three single crochets. So then you skip this, which those are my two slip stitches that I made. Other people might use chains, but I like to do them as slip, as slip stitch so they don't show. But then you go over to your three single crochets and they get another stacked single crochet. Now we skip over this chain all the way over to our chain one to close and do the same thing. Seven double crochets in that same spot. Here is number seven. Skip our two slip stitches, three single crochets on top of our single crochets from the previous round. Jump all the way over to our chain one to close, seven double crochets. That's our sequence all the way around. So I'll meet you back at my orange stitch marker. Six and seven. So there's all the way around with our wheels. And we can slip stitch into our first mark stitch, chain one so we're ready for the next row, but we want to move this back, this marker. We're going to mark our new first stitch. So it's one, two, three, four, five, just like we did before. Just so you keep the habit of keeping it, keeping track of that stitch. This next round, starting in the same spot where we just did our slip stitch, is all single crochets. But this is just a round of single crochets. Make a nice finished edge and make this part right in here, right in here a little bit thicker because I always thought they looked a little bit too skinny and instead of being a, a stitch that I wish I liked, Catherine's Wheel is now one of my favorite stitches because of that really simple changes that I've made to it that I personally find more appealing. I'm sure there's many people in the world that love the original. I just prefer the way that I've modified it a couple of little tweaks and now it's one of my favorites. And my last couple of stitches. Here we are at our stitch marker. So we want to stitch that and move our marker. And then do the next four. So we have one, two, three, four, five again. This is our new starting place. But we had to finish all the way around. So in our very first stitch, slip stitch and fasten off. And so this is going to be our new starting spot. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So we'll go back on with our blue again. 
I'll just show you how one more time how to attach. See the way we originally started, we started here. Then we moved over to here. And now we're moving over here. It's perfect. You always get to make a complete wheel instead of a half a wheel at the end, which is no fun. So our first round starts right there and a single crochet all the way around. And here I am all the way back around with my single crochets of my turquoise. And this is again our new starting spot. I think I still have the original one. That was our very first starting spot because I never took that one out. Just so you can see how we progress along with no seams. That's the important part to me. I hate seams. I hate knots. I don't like those things. If I can make them go away, I will. So now we again with our new color with our single crochet row already done. We slip stitch, chain one so we're ready for the next round and you get to start with the three single crochets every time. Just by moving over our starting spot with our new color, that little bit, you don't have to do any halvesies. And then now it's time for our seven double crochet togethers. and seven and chain one to close with a slip stitch here and a slip stitch there and then you get to go right into your three single crochets and keep going and keep going and keep going. Basically what you would be doing forever and ever and ever is just repeating this four row sequence. It's a four row repeat. Single crochets, there's the bottom of our wheel. Let's go over here actually where this one is easier to see the colors. So you have a sing row of single crochet, the bottom of the wheel, the top of the wheel, and a sing row of single crochet. That's going to happen every time, every time, every time. But what we need to do is just move over our starting point five stitches every time you start a new color. Now this one I think will probably would go around a pop or a beer or maybe even a bottle of water. Just being tiny, this was my practice. This one, I don't know what it would be able to do, but you can see all the color changes, but there is no seam. And then we can go on and make something this gorgeous, which is going to happen very soon. So now you can use Catherine's wheel in the round and it's even easier than it is on a flat piece. So I'm glad I could share that with you today. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimblehooks and tell all of your friends and like and share and do all kinds of cool stuff. And I'll see you very soon. Thanks. Bye.